Hello, welcome to the channel and thanks for watching. And in this video, I'm going to be painting up Eros Slagmist, the Necromunda Bounty Hunter. I've had this in the collection for quite a while, I've decided it was finally time to get it done. Here's the finished article. I think I did a really nice job on this one, so if you keep watching, I will show you exactly what we did. So we started off as a lot of the Necromunda figures um, with a black base coat with lead belcher over the top. Now, what I wanted to do with this figure was do something radically different to our normal paint scheme. I do use quite a lot of washes and things. If you watched a lot, you'll have seen that. Um, and I wanted to do it without using washes and single figures, especially in Necromunda, is a great opportunity to try totally different paint styles than you normally would because you're not trying to blend it into an army, especially when it's a bounty hunter figure, you can have it looking radically different from the rest of the force. So what I wanted to do was take water-based colours, as in the background, he's this character that's gone into his underhive, found this archaeotech that basically makes him effectively like a water vampire. Um, so I wanted to use very watery colours on the cloth and then do some rusted metal effects on um, the metal. So I've taken a nice sort of sea coloured grey and a dark blue and you'll see in there I've done a mix in the middle so there's the grey on the left, the dark blue on the right. Mix in the middle is a 50-50 mix and then what I'm doing here is dropping really um, the blue onto the flat areas, the grey onto the raised areas and almost making this kind of mixed sea blue colour. And the idea I had was that the the recessed areas would have the dark blue in them, the highlight areas would have the grey, and it kind of represents that kind of wave foam pattern where you've got the kind of white on the peaks um, and the, the blue kind of in the cracks. And this was an experiment, I've never mixed these colours before. And you can see here what I'm doing as I'm going around the robe is I'm sort of wet blending, well I am wet blending, um, as I go right around the model. And I'm literally dropping the colours onto um, the cloaks in roughly the area that I think the colours will work, and literally smearing them together um, on the robes so dropping the blues into the crevices using the grey on the top and then literally spreading that colour about until I think it looks you know relatively happy with where I'm at and it was an experiment so I was playing at this point I did a lot of the robe and then later on decided to have a completely different play and I literally dropped the pure dark blue into the deep areas of that robe then used the grey again and blended it out from centre. So I was really experimenting and doing that experiment on you know, the bottom um, part of this robe. And I actually was really pleased with what I came up with. So if you want to match this technique exactly, um, I will put the paints down below so you can go along. But really, this is just that inspiration to say, if you've got a single character like this and you want to try something different, give it a go on one of these models. I mean, maybe not a forger model like this one because it was about 20 quid. I've had it in my collection for a long time though, so I thought, why not have a have a play and never get around to painting it. So it's a great thing to do just to test your skills on a model that if you make it look totally different to the rest of your collection, it doesn't matter um, because, you know, it's, it's a separate character. So I finally kind of established my routine after playing with this and it really is that really dark purple purpley blue in the crevices the 50 50 mix kind of just after that and then more of the gray on the top and really using that gray as an absolute sort of highlight layer and I did consider going up to a whiter color on the highlights and the just bends in the robes but decided you know I was happy with what I did so I went around and did that across the whole model that kind of wet blending technique then went back through and dropped some of the mid blue tones just into where the uh, cloth rips and things were almost sort of highlight that and the holes in the, in the cloth but then really was happy with what I've done and really happy with my experiment and I do think it looks kind of very sea bluey colour. Now it's obviously onto the rest of the, the painting and trying to lay the rest of the base colours down so I'm just taking some black and putting that onto any of the um, kind of tendrils that attach uh, the, the a rig to him onto his boots and onto his gun casings, going back to the standard colours that you will, you know, see in the underhive. Use quite a lot of the brass colour or attribute armour colour in this case on this model because it's meant to be an Archaeotech rig that he's wearing. So onto the caps of the water holders uh, and onto quite a lot of the panels around him as we go. And it's a really nice kind of um, colour to use. Makes it look that little bit, you know, older and well, Archaeotech-y, which is what he's wearing and that's another joy for me particularly with Necromunda in that you know Necromunda the hives are thousands and thousands of year old there's all sorts of different equipment there's all chances for doing different techniques different paint schemes trying different stuff but while you will notice that a lot of what I do today on this paint scheme is how I normally would paint just drop in and try something a little different is you know always a nice thing to do 
So once you've done the, the metal, he has got a little bit of flesh showing on him. It's just his hands in the background. These are the only human pieces that still remain. And it gets discussed whether, you know, his body has actually disappeared and he's just got his hands left from the architect rig has kind of half killed him. So um, sort of a little weird focus there, but you can see um, trying to get the hands and trying to get the um, last remaining human part of him done. Then we're using a different blue for the eye lenses. I do use a number of different blues in here because I want to keep that kind of watery theme going. So again, my theme is kind of, you know, watery colours with rusting metal. Kind of like you would see it at the seaside at a pier or something. I'm dropping the same blue that I used for his eye lenses into the bottom kind of half-ish of the water canisters that's on his front. And we're going to paint these up later as kind of a half filled uh, water container and on his back here similar thing now we're not going halfway up in terms of you know straight up that cylinder that's open we, you, you want to do the line based on where uh, the horizon line is for that kind of thing because obviously it's angled on it to his back so you draw a flat line but flat line compared to the ground not compared to the length of the cylinder if that makes any sense and then we'll make it look a little bit more natural and you could do this with stuff other than water you know the cylinders or the canisters uh, I'm just trying to follow the, that particular part of the background using a little bit of uh, a dark brown onto the pouches and things there because you know there's always pouches on models uh, but again I've done a different dark brown to what I normally would because I normally try and make it look leathery I wanted to kind of make this look my, my idea was literally of a, a seaside pier you know the waves the rusty metal and in this case the sort of brown that you'd get of the decking now I've done the base exactly as I've done all my Necromunda bases now ordinarily I don't dirty up Necromunda models clothing because I tend to use a dirty wash over the top of that just to work for me but I didn't want to use washes on the robes in this case so literally a bit of dry brush in here taking off the bulk of the brown onto the paper there and just very very gently dry brushing across the bottom of the robes just some of that brown onto there to distribute some of that dirt to make him sort of look like he's been muckied up by the underhive don't go too crazy just the bottom maybe six or seven mil of the model and now we're on to how i traditionally would dirty up the clothing and the robes so we're using an ink washer this is a um, sepia ink wash it's a valeo one it is a very dirty mucky wash ordinarily i would slap this over the whole model when it comes to necromunda but i wanted to try something different with the robes so i've just done it on the flesh and the metallic areas nowhere else i've not touched any of the robe but what i do do with a very very fine brush just to try and draw some details in is put a tiny amount um just in the very deepest recesses of the robe you can barely see that it's in there um, but it just adds just a little bit of similar tones but again it is very very minuscule and honestly you probably wouldn't really even notice that i'd uh, necessarily done this stage but i just wanted to do and see what that would do and again it was an experiment piece for me trying something different um, and again if you don't try something different you're never going to change your painting techniques and whatever i paint radically different now to how i did 20 years ago for example so this is what it looks like when it's dry um nicely muted sort of rusty tones and things still got a bit of work to do on that and really you know quite like how uh, it's going now i wouldn't leave this at this stage quite often after a wash day as i say to people oh you could finish here but the water effects and things particularly we need to do some work on so we're just digging out the, the retribute rama, the brass section again, and going around and just doing some gentle highlights on all the sections that we've got um, the brass and are showing through. Now I've been asked before about why sometimes you'll see me put a metallic colour on the wet palette, sometimes I won't and I'll keep it separate and put it like on a lid or something. And it really depends what I'm doing with that metallic colour afterwards. If you want to dry brush with metals, which is quite a common thing, you don't put it in a wet palette because it puts too much water in there. But I'm doing kind of a highlight layer uh, afterwards, so actually getting it a little bit watery is fine and it causes it to merge in a little bit more on the metal. Um, so we're doing that with the brass, we're now doing that with a kind of... Um, traditional steel colour not putting a massive amount on just using it round edges of you can see here like the the water window um doing it on the raised edges where the light would hit but also doing it on sections where there might be you know battle damage on there so again using it off the wet palette because i don't mind in this instance if it gets watered down if you were dry brushing you wouldn't put metallics onto a wet palette because how the pigment works in metallic it separates too much for you to do it um, dry brushing and things with it if you keep it on that kind of wet palette quick highlight up onto the skin here just the raised edges around the knuckles those kind of things leaving that shade showing through so you will end up again with three or four different tones showing on the flesh here depending how thick the wash and things were so it's a nice quick simple paint scheme in this sort of sense this whole paint scheme took me about an hour and a half on one evening and about an hour on the second evening to finish it off so a fairly quick um, color scheme now working on the water which is the 
standout part of this model, apart from the robes. I put a little bit of black in that top section to really deepen up the em empty part of the container. Now we're working on the multi-toned water. So I've used the original blue color, but you don't hit the edges. So leave a little line around the, the edge of the container where you've got the, where the wash is really showing. I've then dropped on that original blue color. I've done a mix of the original blue with a bit of white in it. So it's kind of a 50-50 mix. I'm putting that in slightly further in. So you've got again, multi-tones. Now I'm taking a pure white color with a very, very thin line, drawing a very thin line of white at that join line between the blue and the black. Then I'm dotting some of the white down in amongst the still wet blue and it's now giving me an even more different blue color and then really depending how I feel like it's looking I'm picking up the original um, darker blue or I'm picking up the blended 50-50 um, blue and white mix and just dropping it onto the already wet paint and really having a play to see what I think it looks like now you could leave it like you've seen here with the, the couple of blends what I decided to then do is take the white again and just dot some little dots of white through the blue um, going through and that really represents the kind of bubbles the moving liquid whatever and I'm quite happy with how I've left it there you could play more but I quite liked that and then I just replicated that effect into the water containers uh, on his front so really happy with where we're at now I'm using a rust wash which is a Vallejo rust wash and I'm going to use this purely on the silver parts and you can see here quite frequently this paint scheme uh, I've made mistakes with the washes and whatever what you do is you go off clean the brush in some water rub it off where you're not happy with it and then crack back on I did the same thing when I was painting the robes earlier I got some washes in the wrong place and it's quite a frequent thing but one of the biggest things about painting is if you make a mistake well quickly fix it um, and crack on I did exactly the same there I've put wash where I'm not happy and it's gone on to the uh, brass metallic so again wet the brush get it off and then go back to the rust wash. So I'm putting this maybe on about, at a guess, 30% of the areas that are what you would say is metal. Trying to avoid the areas where I've highlighted the, the damage because you want, again, multi-tones. Moving on now to Nile Epoxide, the Games Workshop one, to really give the oxidized brass effect onto all the areas we've painted with that um, Retributor Armor or the brass color. And again, I'm probably using less of this than I did with the rust wash because it's a bit more of a vibrant, vivid colour. It stands out a bit more. We don't want it to look like I've painted um, loads of him green. This is just to, you know, give that aged appearance. So maybe on 10 to 15% of the model. And we're back to the finished model shot. I really like this paint scheme. I think it's um, different enough from my normal painting to make me think I've tried something out of the box, uh, but close and it will blend in with the rest of my Necromunda collection. So really happy with what I did on this paint scheme. I uh, hope you like the same things. Here's some of the finished shots. If you do like it, thanks for sticking with the video. Um, like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz down below. And if you fancy taking a look, check out my Instagram and Facebook, Adam's Hobby Stuff. And hopefully I'll see you on the channel again. Thanks.